G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at a fairly controversial plane that I've seen a lot of people discuss in my comment section, and of course on uh, a couple of other content creators' comment sections as well. This is the J21A1, and a lot of people have been seeing this plane and calling it fairly overpowered. Now, personally, I'll have to disagree. I'll sort of use this video to kind of explain why. But for, first and foremost, I'd like to have a look at sort of all the vehicles that a lot of people have uh, described as over, overpowered, particularly in the aircraft uh, sort of scene over the last few years, especially sort of looking right back at War Thunder when it was mostly aircraft. Things like the Yaks and the, uh, the Yak-9T in particular were considered quite strong, and this was due to the Yaks having very good performance, but most importantly, them having extremely good firepower. A lot of planes that are also considered overpowered, at least on release, were things like the Heikel 219 uh, and the, not quite the Dornier 335, but basically anything with very strong head-on armament. And that makes me think, the J21A1 is one of those planes that has extremely strong head-on armament. It doesn't have guns in the outsides of the wings, it has them fairly close in, nice and tucked in close to the, uh, close to the cockpit there. Uh, it's also got a lot of firepower packed into the nose. I think it's got, uh, I think it's two, uh, basically 50 cals, and, uh, or, or they're 51 cals, I'm not quite sure, someone wrote me in the comments about that, and it's got a 20mm cannon with I think 150 rounds or 140 rounds of ammunition, and uh, it really absolutely slaps in terms of its firepower department. The problem with this plane lies in its performance. It doesn't climb particularly well, it doesn't turn particularly well, and it doesn't retain energy particularly well. And that is where the J21A falls into a little bit of a pit. You see, if a plane can get its guns on target, then that makes it extremely potent. But if a plane cannot get its guns on target, then it is basically useless. That's why a plane like the ME163 in the right hands is so powerful. Whilst for the majority of the community, myself included, it is borderline useless because I just can't aim the guns. Another thing goes for early G91s. The uh, G91R1 and the G91 Pre-Series, especially, especially when they were fairly high on the uh, the agenda, fairly powerful uh, in, their, in terms of their performance, were powerful so because of their G just absolutely insane acceleration. They had shit guns though, and you had to be really careful where you placed your guns, which is what made it overall less threatening than something like the Heikel 219 or like this particular plane here. Having a look again at top tier, you can see that the most powerful planes generally have the most powerful missiles, that is, the most powerful weapon systems. The uh, F4E is one of the most powerful there, and of course you cannot forget the MiG-21 BIS, which has an absolute metric shit ton of missiles compared to its uh, compatriots, especially basically anything with an R60 is considered to be extremely powerful, and honestly I've been playing some MiG-21 SMT again, and I can 100% understand why. First victim here is the P-51, and the P-51 should not be lower than me at all. Um, whilst it doesn't climb particularly well, it also has fairly decent head-on firepower, but most importantly, it does not have that sort of uh, turning capability and needs to be above. The uh, P-51 there should have taken the time to side climb, and because he didn't do that, he sort of paid the price. Now, having a look at this F-5F or F-6F here, he uh, basically just ignores me and goes for the BF-109, and so I get myself a really easy crit on the F-6F. I'm getting kills here that I shouldn't, because I'm sort of making use of players that aren't really paying attention. The J-21 in this circumstance here has a bit of an altitude advantage, and having that altitude advantage is really what makes it shine because if it doesn't have it it is very much a struggle bus and there are plenty of situations that i can basically show you in this video that make it um you know not exactly the best so in this particular case here i actually have a couple of enemies that are one's above me and one is basically at my altitude and the other is at my altitude but can very easily go above me the P-51 here is going to be my first threat, and uh, it seems like he's ignoring me at first. But then it uh, looks like he might just turn around. Nope, he's going to continue straight ahead, leaving me here with the P-38 and the P-51. Now, the P-38 is heavier because it is a heavy fighter. It's twin-engined, 
and of course I will be able to outturn it. The P51 is just fat because it's eaten too many American hamburgers and is obviously not a dogfighting plane. I don't understand why you would try and turn fight with a P51, uh, sorry, in a P51, but if you can sort of cleverly work it out between the two, you can actually get a couple of really nice uh, sort of double team maneuvers, and that's kind of what this P51 has kind of gone for, it seems like. And in the case here with the P38, I managed to crit him, I think I shear off a tip of his wing, and uh, you can see that just the lack of coordination and the just sheer desire to turn fight has led these two planes to pretty much just sort of fall into the trap of the J-21. You see, because it doesn't retain energy terribly well, and it doesn't turn too bad, it's kind of a jack of all trades and an ace of none. Whereas things like the P-51 and the P-38 are more thoroughbred boom and zoomers, and that comes to show in a dogfight like this, where I'm basically able to get around the P-51, and unfortunately because I didn't have my wings properly, I didn't uh, sort of flow into that little shot there and I w wasn't able to take the killing blow but that's okay because the P-51 is still committing to more and more turn fights again making some pretty crucial mistakes there I go I set him on fire and there comes the critical hit so what am I gonna do me and my dumbass is gonna let him burn I said he's gonna burn and there he goes he puts his fire out like I said I've had this fairly you know regular this thing has started to occur a lot more getting planes that will put out their fires so if you set a fire make sure to make make sure to like euthanize that plane very very quickly now I spot a p51 coming out or actually I think I hear him before anything else and notice how the p51 is actually able to cut in on the inside now this p51 here is I think just too slow to keep up and in the first couple of turns, the P-51 can actually get me here if I'm not paying attention. Now, I decide instead to extend for this P-51, because I know he's going to wrap around, and if I have to deal with the second P-51, it's going to be too much of a pain in the ass. So, I just take the time to shear his wing off, and then I get hit by some AAA, which is an absolute pain in the ass. AAA honestly just gives me the shit sometimes, but you know what? We'll take the, we'll take the good with the bad, and we'll just deal with this as it comes. The P-51 here is now going into a vertical sort of scissors with me, and at this point here, he's basically lost. The P-51 cannon staying is just too heavy to deal with sort of this type of stuff, and so it's going to lose out in the long run. It is a faster plane than the J-21 and should be used as such. You should be using the P-51 as a boom and zoomer, and as you can see, I'm going to get myself a couple of... Ooh, a couple. I've gotten myself a really easy kill, and I'm going to get myself another easy kill if this P-51 continues to uh, perform the way he is. Now, he has gone off into a straight line, and he's starting to actually put the distance away, and then I get a shot onto what might be his uh, oil, and he panics and turns around, which is a massive no-no. Now, uh, if you guys want to know kind of what happens for the rest of this match, uh, I the P P-38 he goes back to base. I managed to land this plane uh, by doing a cool little trick called prop feathering, and then later on in the match, I basically get fucked up by some AAA near that uh, A cap, or that uh, catcher point there. I think it's the B cap, actually. Uh, and the BCD comes and finishes me off while I make an incorrect turn trying to get away from the AAA. So, uh, yeah, AAA is very fun, very balanced, and Gaijin should definitely take on the uh, suggestions that I put up in the video that I've been working on for about four years, thinking about. So, the J21 how overpowered do people think it is? I honestly, I don't know where it comes from. I genuinely don't know why people find this plane overpowered. The only thing I can suspect is its head-on armament and the fact that it is a sort of jack of all trades and an ace of none. The Soviet props, for example, seem like a jack of all trades and an ace of none, but they're really low altitude energy monsters. They just hold on to energy so well. And of course they have some deadly firepower when it comes to it. You've got the Shvak 20 mils, which are fairly good for that lower to mid tiers, and for some reason they tend to set fires. I don't know why, they just do, and that's kind of the bonus of the yaks. Things like the American props are very hardcore boom and zoomers. You don't really want to be turn fighting with these things, you need to be climbing, uh, and in most cases, the only exceptions are like P36, P40, P63, and occasionally in a P51 you can dogfight, but most other planes maybe even the Corsair, 
Most other planes, though, I would be sort of sticking the hardline boom and zoom. Things like the P-38, things like the P-47, uh, and things like uh, maybe certain aerocoppers and certain P-51s that are a little bit more on the heavy side. You can see, just returning back to the gameplay footage, uh, that I have prop feathered, which is a cool little trick that you can do, uh, and that's gotten me a little bit more distance, putting me uh, with a nice little smooth landing there, just to boot. So, returning to kind of what you should be doing in certain props, I need to make a video on this. Uh, I have been working on a script, but I'm overall very unsatisfied with the way it's going. Um, but generally, there are sort of themes to each nation, and it seems like Sweden just tends to have really good guns and has sort of average performance at best. So, moving on to the next match, I'm going to start it here at this particular point, and uh, even though this is a little bit out of the action, it kind of shows you the sort of mistakes that some people might be making in front of the J21. Have a look at this Kai-61 up here and the P-40s below me and the P-36 below me. They're both lower on altitude than me. This uh, Kai-61 here is higher and the P-38 is higher and now the Kai-61 has decided to go a little bit lower. He's being chased there by the BF-109 and that could be potentially what uh, what does it for the uh, Kai-61 but in my opinion he should have retained a little bit more altitude. I'm uh, going to go in here for what was a head-on, and now the Kai-61 has decided that um, he don't want any of that. He don't want any of that at all, and so, uh, yeah, it's basically game over from here. At this point, this is where the enemy team lost the match. They failed to retain the altitude that you need for a victory, and it's as simple as that. The moment you lose that, especially against something like a J-21, it is game over. Because the J-21, whilst it doesn't retain the best energy, whilst it's not the fastest, whilst it doesn't dogfight the best, will absolutely shred you if it has altitude over you. And that is exactly what you need to do in just about every plane to combat the J-21. And it's not particularly hard. It's not particularly impossible at all. Because the J-21 does not climb particularly well. And you need to factor that in when you play this plane. Not only that, but you shouldn't be committing to head-ons, and you shouldn't be trying any fancy shit like this Kai-61. Uh, and, of course, you should be keeping your eyes open on uh, all of your opponents. That Kai-61, I figured, yep, he's pretty he's pretty screwed. So, I'm going to go for this, K uh, this P-40. P-40 is just putting himself into a random dive. Of course, this is lower tier, so I, I guess it's kind of expected for players to not know what they're doing. But... By nitpicking like this, you kind of get an understanding as to exactly what's going wrong. If you hold your altitude in a plane like this against the J-21, uh, you basically got it easy. There's not a whole lot that a J-21 can do if it does not have the altitude. It can't run from most props because it is just not fast enough. It can't sit in a sustained dogfight from some props, particularly those that are either Japanese or even some German props. But honestly, if you just keep altitude above this thing, which isn't really that hard to do, you're going to have an absolute breeze against this thing. And of course, if you don't commit to head-ons, that'll be sort of your bread and butter. No head-ons and stay above them, and you will have an easy time. Next victim here, P36, is basically asleep at the wheel. I'm just going to commit to a head-on. Don't really care. It's the end of the match. And uh, there's not a whole lot to it. The P36 does not have the head-on armament. It doesn't matter if it's the P-36G with the extra guns, you're not going to compete with something like a J-21 in a head-on. And uh, you know what? I wouldn't recommend that you do. P-40E here, again, sort of uh, a little bit low on engine power. I'm just going to spray a little bit, go for a couple of little yoinkers. Maybe see if I can yoink this kill. There we go. And uh, then I get struck by someone else. A6M2N is a very potato plane anyway, so uh, I wouldn't be... I'd be counting your blessings every time you fly out that thing. It is not exactly a strong plane. From memory, it's like a spotter plane. So, uh, there's that. Anyway, ladies and gents, that is exactly how to lose against the J21A1. If you just maintain your altitude, I know it sounds very easy, um, but it might not be if you've got, say, Germans on your enemy team, but take that time to try and climb. Even if you just get above the J-21s and sort of uh, have to dogfight in defensively against the bf 109s try that. Try not going head-on with the J-21. And when I mean not going head-on, I mean literally just bugging out of there as soon as you see him going head-on. 
try different things that are not just flat out head-ons against things like the J21 and you'll find that your experience will greatly improve. Honestly, I gen genuinely have no idea why people think the J21 is so overpowered, but maybe this will give you a hand and you could probably just hear a plate because I have refused to clean my desk for about a day. So I'm going to go and do that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care and I'll catch you next time.